Hello and welcome to Blinds.com NFL Team Previews. Team by team breakdown. Matt Brown, Steven Anders coming to you guys. Everything we do absolutely free. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give us a little thumbs up if you want to. And we're going to do every team in the NFL. So maybe you want to be notified. So if you want to hit that notification button, probably a smart thing to do to get all of these things as soon as they hit the internet. Steven, we are looking at a Bills team that is coming off an 11-6 and six season last year. That said... Coaching staff shakeup. Joe Brady going to take over at offensive coordinator. Bobby Babich as defensive coordinator. These are both internal promotions within the uh, organization there. Traded away Steph Diggs. Gabe Davis left in free agency, as did Leonard Floyd, Trey White, Mitch Morse, Jordan Poyer. You kind of get my my drift here that there's going to be a, a different looking squad for this Bills team when it's all said and done uh, to replace all of that. They went in the free agency market, and I don't know if they did anything that really blows anyone's skirt up. Uh, Curtis Samuel, Mac Hollins, MBS in the wide receiver room. They brought in safety Mike Edwards, uh, defensive lineman Austin Johnson, corner Cam Lewis, and then they brought in Mitch Trubisky, obviously familiar with this offense, to uh, back up Josh Allen there in the draft. Their big draft pick uh, in the second round, Keon Coleman, Maybe their de facto number one wide receiver when it's all said and done. They got a safety in Cole Bishop also in the second round. And then Dwayne Carter in the third round, a defensive tackle. So you start to look, Steven, and and, you know one of the knocks that I have heard against this team is if you look at the additions compared to the subtractions, that not only does it not add up, but it doesn't add up in a big way. Yeah, I mean, my kind of opinion of the Bills offseason is eh. You know, it's just like, you know, you you got some pieces that you need to fill in. They went uh, bargain shopping on the free agent market, and they're at a point now where their quarterback makes a ton of money, and you're going to have to try and piecemeal this together because of that quarterback contract taking up so much. So, you know, the other thing that really stood out to me towards the end of last year is just the seismic shift in offensive philosophy that they made going from, you know, pretty above average passing team with Josh Allen to not just the most run heavy team in the NFL, but by a decent margin with Joe Brady as the offensive coordinator here, Matt. So uh, I think this, I think this decreases, um, what am I trying to say here? Just on a game to on a game to game basis, their margin for error is less now if they're going to be that run heavy, and it's going to be more difficult to win games by big margins. So if they're going to continue to be graded like that in the betting market, uh, I'm not sure the Bills are a team I'm going to be looking at week in and week out, Matt, uh, to cover big spreads. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, if we look on. The defensive side of the ball, there's still a a decent amount of talent. and They did lose a couple of guys, but whenever you look just across here, specifically at the corner position, even though Trey White is gone, Christian Benford, and then if you look at Rasul Douglas, they're starting two corners, both guys inside the top 12 in uh, cornerback ratings last year by Pro Football Focus, 127 different qualifiers for that. You have two starters inside the top 12. That is very, very good. You look on the defensive line, Greg Russo has been a stud since he's gotten into the league. Daquan Jones, another guy that has produced at a pretty high level. And, you know, Matt Milano went healthy, really good linebacker. We're going to have to figure out what they're going to do at the safety position. Maybe they have to start Cole Bishop that they took in the second round. As a rookie, I'm sure they don't want to do that, but that might be what they have to do considering the losses that they had at the safety position. But, you know, outside of that, I mean, you're starting with a pretty good base, Stephen. I know you said before we got recording here, there was a little bit of disagreement here, but you got a couple of really good guys on the defensive line. You got a couple of stud corners. You got a good linebacker again when healthy. Uh, I think the safety position is certainly going to be maybe a an interesting one here for this Bills team, but it's not like they're devoid of talent on the defensive side of the ball. No, I agree with that. The the secondary is definitely what stood out to me as well, having those three cornerbacks who had PFF grades of 80 or more a year ago. That's that's great to see. But I also want to see some strong pass rush as well with that. Uh, Ed Oliver is a good pass rusher, but Von Miller has now slid to being the number 100 graded edge rusher last year by PFF. Like it's He is firmly on the downward trajectory of his career. So... Overall, it was a defense that was top five in pass rush win rate. Um, 
So I, I think the run game is where the liability is here, right? It's been like that for a few years now. Ed Oliver, if you look at his splits from run game and, and pass rush, as good as he is pass rushing is that is how bad he is in stopping the run. So I think that's where teams are going to try and take advantage of them again. They're going to need to show that they can stop the run. If they can't, I think we're going to get some of these low scoring games where um, some variance comes into play potentially here. And again, another reason why if they can't stop the run, it might be another reason where I'm looking to to back some touchdown or more dogs on some of their opponents this year. That said, you are looking at a team that is one, two, three, four, fifth on the board as far as Super Bowl odds. Best odds you can find out there on them, about 15 to 1. Only the Chiefs, Niners, Ravens, and Lions with uh, better consensus odds out there than them to to win it all. Uh, Steven, the division in and of itself, I think, is going to be pretty difficult. I am a little bit higher on the Dolphins, I think, than most people are. I'm down on the Jets, but you're up on the Jets. One of us, if you're right, then this division's even tougher. I don't think the Jets are going to be bad by any stretch. I just don't, you know, I, I'm not buying the, the Jets as real Super Bowl contenders type deal. But, um, yeah, you get the couple of gimmies there in the Patriots, who I think will be the worst team in the NFL. But, uh, you know, you got two other really, really strong teams in there. Josh Allen is always going to be one of the top names towards the top. When it comes to the MVP numbers as well. So that is something that is, if you go over, Stephen, over the last three seasons, 2023, 2022, 2021, there are exactly two quarterbacks who have thrown for 4,000 yards or more in all three of those seasons. It is Josh Allen and the GOAT himself, Patrick Mahomes. And so that is it. You are two names that have thrown for over 4,000 yards in each of those three seasons. And so again, Talent coming and going, offensive coordinators coming and going, different you know, different offensive lines in there for him, and somehow he just figures out a way to get it done. I actually am not all that worried about Josh Allen and his production this year because I think he will figure out a way to get it done one way or another. That being said, I just don't know the upside of the team's wins and all of that. And so with that, like, I mean, I think the Dolphins are going to win the division. So I can't get there on any of these bets, like just on Josh Allen as a as a solo practitioner, right? Like I can't, I can't get there on an MVP or an Offensive Player of the Year or any of those things like that because it's just I don't know if they're going to win enough games. Like I said, I, I don't even have them winning the division. Yeah, Josh Allen's amazing, right? Like I'll add to what you said. He also had 28 rushing touchdowns in the last three years combined. Back to back seasons being one of the top five quarterbacks in terms of the advanced metrics, being top five both in 2022 and 2023 by EPA and CPOE composite completion percentage over expected. Uh, add that to EPA, expected points added. So, big, complicated, analytic way to say he's one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL. If there's a knock on him, clearly it's the turnovers, though, right, Matt? He had 22 yeah. turnovers last year. Only Sam Howell had more. He was number one in the league in turnovers in 2022 with 19. That's how you maybe lose some games you're not supposed to lose. And we've seen that here and there with Buffalo over the past couple of years. So he's got a good enough offensive line. I think it's basically the same offensive line that came back last year. Um, there is some disagreement by some of the projection sites out there about how good it is. They struggled in third and long situations. Um, you know, letting pass rushers get to him at the worst rate in the league. But outside of third and long situations overall, this was still a unit that was top seven in pass block and one and run block win rate a year ago. So I think the Bills go as far as Josh Allen takes them. And he might need to be Superman again for them to go far. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at with it. You know, just circling back to the schedule that you mentioned, Matt, they have to play a first place schedule. And that means that they get the Chiefs, the Lions and the Ravens as their crossover games where the Jets get the Broncos, Vikings, and Steelers. That's stark. The Dolphins get the Raiders, Packers, and Browns as their crossover games. That might be the difference in the division with them playing all the other same teams on the schedule. They get the NFC West, which is no cakewalk for Buffalo. Really, for all four teams in that division, you can make an argument as possibly mm. being playoff teams. And the AFC South, C.J. Stroud... Anthony Richardson coming back healthy. Not really wor worried about the Titans, but you know you still get Trevor Lawrence and Doug Peterson as the other. This is a loaded schedule for Buffalo. I think that's why you're seeing basically a three-way pick them in the division odds. You get plus 180, plus 190, plus 220 
on the Bills, the Jets, and the Dolphins, respectively. It's it's interesting, Matt. You know, the last note I'll say is, you know, with that win total at ten and a half, it's juiced way to the under minus one hundred and fifty. If you look at spreads right now, going into the season, there's six games they should win where they're favorites of three or more. Mm. They have ten toss up games spread between two and a half either way, and just one game where they're projected to lose. They're a three point dog at the Ravens in Week Four. So if they get the six games they're supposed to win and split the 10 toss-up games, well, that gets you to 11, but I'm not sure, man. I, I look at the roster, and I think the defense is okay, but I think I think Josh Allen might have to be Superman here. I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of teams that are ultra run-heavy in this era. I'm just not a fan of that. I get uncomfortable with it. I think it in, increases variance on a week-to-week basis, and maybe that's a flaw in my own thinking and logic, but that's just how I feel about it. It's a it's an interesting schedule overall, just the kind of cadence of the the tough to, you know, winnable games because there's no real stretch in either direction, right? It's kinda of like you start off with Arizona, then right into Miami. You get it Jacksonville, we don't really know exactly what Jacksonville will be, but then it's right into road game against Baltimore. Then you go to Texas and then the Jets. There is a two game stretch of Titans, Seahawks, but then Miami, Indy, Kansas City. You get a buy, San Francisco, Ram, Detroit, you know, and so there's just no, there's no stretch of like where you go, oh, that's a nice little six game stretch right there where they should be able to really get their footing. It's just not like that with the way that this schedule is put together for them. You know, I think if the only thing you can point to, especially if you are holding a win total ticket and you are going to be clutching uh, down towards the end, you do get your final two of the three games are against the Patriots, right? I mean, that's like the best part. That's the best part of all of this. By then, the Patriots probably have turned to Drake May, have probably, yeah. you know, have, have probably are probably starting a rookie quarterback and all the stuff like that. So, I mean, if you're if there's anything to be happy about, I guess with the schedule, it is that. But I'm with you. I think the win total is dead on. We don't have to bet I win agree. totals with all these teams. And like, I think this is a coin flip as to whether they get to whether they finish with 10 or 11. And so for, for that, I have absolutely no interest whatsoever. Yeah, I completely agree with you. The, the fact that the juice is shaded to minus 150 on the under makes me not want it at all. Uh, I don't want to bet this team to win 11 games. You know, I went through the projections there. It lines up perfectly. I completely agree with you on that. So I guess I'm now just looking at a game by game basis here, right? Like we've talked about some bottom barrel projected teams this year, like the Patriots. Maybe I want to bet on them to cover big spreads as underdogs. I think the bills are a team. I just want to fade as a big favorite this year. And maybe that'll bite me in the butt. I don't know, but I'm seeing week one, seven point favorite against Arizona. I'd be surprised if that holds up. I mean, it's not winter weather Buffalo at the end of the season. It's beginning of the year. I'm I'm seven's a lot for me in that just my my initial reaction of it before we get into the closer to the season yeah no I I understand um I for me I'm looking at a season total this already is in the account for me but uh I know I'm asking a lot of a rookie receiver but listen I think Keon Coleman is going to have to be the wide receiver one here for this team like it just is what it is I, Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir are just not are just not wide receiver ones, right? That's just not what it is. And I'm pretty sure they drafted Coleman to be wide receiver one for this team, Steven. And his season yardage is set at 700 and a half yards, right? While I understand that Dalton Kincaid might end up being the de facto number one, kind of like a Travis Kelsey situation in, in Kansas City, there's still going to be plenty of targets and plenty of room for and for a receiver in this offense to average. By the way, if you do 701 yards divided by even 16 games, let's say Coleman misses a game, Stephen, I still only need him to average 44 yards a game to get over 700 yards on the season, right? So we're talking missing a game, and you still only have to average 44 yards a game on the season. I think we see a few different 100-yard games from Coleman this year because, again, what are we getting out of Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir? They're kind of gadget dudes. They're kind of limited in what they really bring to the table as far as route trees and what they can do on the field. And I know this is everybody's awesome season and everyone's the greatest person that's ever walked the face of the earth. But you hear these Bills beat reporters and just say, that they say Josh Allen and Keon Coleman already have a connection. He's already looking for him a ton in the red zone. He's already 
throwing to him left and right in very important situations in these drills that they're running and things like that. And again, it's just, if I have a guy that I know that the volume is going to be there and I do predict that the volume is going to be there for Coleman, I will I will assume that he'll be able to average 44 yards a game over 16 games over the course of the season and get me over 700 yards. So I'm looking more towards the run game because I do think they'll continue to be uh, as run heavy as they were when Brady took over as the OC. And I'm kind of scratching my head here at the rushing yards over under for James Cook. It's sitting below 900. I'm seeing an 875 and a half on the board. And James Cook had 1,122 yards last year. The vast majority of those games before Joe Brady took over as the offensive coordinator. Yeah. What What am I missing here? I don't I don't understand why he's lined at only 875. I guess running backs get injured more often, but beyond that, I don't know. What am I missing, Matt? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that there are a few different running backs where they 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 line these guys just assuming that there's going to be multiple games missed, right? Because it's just. If if you if you're healthy for 17 games for some of these dudes where they're in a rare bell cow situation, which we know that that's not the case for some teams out there, but there are teams that are that are in bell cow situations, and this is definitely one of them in the Bills. If you get if you get the if you get the games you're supposed to get, then it's 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 going to fly over this, right? So it's yeah. just a it's you're betting on health, and I understand betting on health is a little bit scary, but it's um it's one of those things where I I'm. I do like that a a decent amount. Uh, for for what, one one more thing for reference on that thing with Keon Coleman, like think of how much we like just ragged on that Gabe Davis was like persona non grata in this offense and like how he was just a, a just a trash wide receiver, and then you look and see that Gabe Davis went for seven hundred and forty six yards in this offense last year, right? <laughs> I mean, this is a guy that literally would go games without even catches, like he would have zero catches in games and stuff and whatever, like so. Keon Coleman is going to get far more targets than the 81 that Gabe Davis got last year, and he's going to have far more receptions than the 45 that Gabe Davis had as well. And so um, I really, really, really like that bet, and I actually have even put in a very high plus money bet on Keon Coleman to go over 1,000 yards for for the season as well. Um, it's, it's, uh, It's one of those deals where if he is treated like I think he is going to be treated, then he's going to get very, very close uh, by the end of the season. Let me give you a fun hypothetical head-to-head here. Mm -hmm. Buffalo passed on Xavier Worthy, traded the pick to Kansas City to take Xavier Worthy, opting instead to take Keon Coleman a little bit later. Which receiver has more receiving yards this year? Keon Keon Coleman Coleman by 200 yards. Over Xavier Worthy. Yeah, Keon Coleman by 200 yards. You and I might have a bourbon bet on that. Yeah, one. yeah. I mean, there's nobody else. There's nobody else for Buffalo, and there's and they they have Hollywood Brown in in Kansas City, and so yeah. But go- you get the most one of the most run heavy offenses in the league. I get one of the most pass heavy offenses in the league. Uh, I, I don't. Mm. It doesn't. But I mean, it's it's all about it's all about targets and quality of targets, right? I mean, at the end of the day, so it doesn't. I mean, I get it, but it doesn't. Snap and honestly. Too. And Coleman's honestly, going to be right, on the field, right? I don't know how much. I don't know if Worthy's going to play as many snaps as Coleman is. And and it's, I mean, I just, and also I just, I mean, I just pointed out Josh Allen's thrown for four thousand yards every year for the last three <laughs> years. So I mean, like you can see here, and we can go like, oh, run heavy, run heavy. It doesn't matter, right? I mean, like it does, like that doesn't really matter when it's all said and done. So, um, I'm 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 pretty confident that he's going to do pretty much what he does all the time anyway you know with everything further as far as like the run heavy stuff and the things like that I mean I think there's just a little bit of of a false narrative going on with that I mean Josh Allen had the fifth most pass attempts in the league last year I mean like and and like it's just one of those not when Joe Brady took over though Matt that's that's what I'm trying to figure out so it's it's one of those things where if you look and you see that more pass you know more pass attempts than every other quarterback in the league other than four and you could and you can wipe one of them off in Sam Howell because Sam Howell they were just trailing every single game and so you you had say like Washington was literally just throwing you know every single down or whatever it was it literally only tra- trails Goff Mahomes and Prescott as far as quarterbacks who were on good teams so you know I, I don't know I, I'm 
I'm okay with Josh Allen. I'm certainly okay with this passing game. I think it'll be perfectly fine. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know me. I'm I'm a little I'm a little bearish on him. Yeah, I um. But again, that that's the, the only bet I have in the account for for me. Like I said, is is that Keon Coleman bet? I am on the Dolphins for this division, so I'm obviously not going to be betting them for anything else. If I don't think they're going to win the division, I'm not going to bet them to win the AFC or to win the Super Bowl. And like I said, if I'm higher on the Dolphins in this division than I am the Bills, I can't bet Josh Allen for anything either, right? So it's just kind of one of those things where I'll sit back, I'll take a, a, a number that I think is too low on what will end up being the number one receiver there, and just kind of move on from a season-long bet perspective. Yeah, my final thought is with how much Josh Allen has turned the ball over the past couple of years, the, the, the bad moments have been, you know, as many highlights of those as there are of the amazing moments, right? I don't know how I feel about that if it, with their current team rating with a receiver core now that doesn't have Stephon Diggs. So, I mean, their Dalton Kincaid better be really freaking good, to be honest. I think I mean, Coleman better be really freaking good. I, I think I think the, I, th- I don't think there's a question whether Dalton Kincaid's good or not. I think we're I think we know that for sure. The question is 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 Keon Coleman going to be able to do anything as a as a rookie? And that's kind of the big thing that's that's lingering out there. I think when it's all when it's all said and done. Um, guys, you can pro, you can compare all of those odds that we talked about here on this over on the lines.com. So go in, click on your state, and you can make sure if you do want to bet this team that you're getting the very best number that is humanly possible. Uh, only one bet for me. Can't get there on the win total. This might be one of those wait and see win totals, Stephen, as well. Like you kind of see how they fare in those first four or five weeks, and then maybe right. you make a decision from there like what if they play very very good against these three tough games in the Dolphins and and Ravens and Texans and maybe we realize we realize oh this is just the same old Bills or if we look at this team and we see that oh man that is uh this team is 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 struggling pretty mightily here well look at the ass end of the schedule guys like it doesn't get all that much easier yeah there's two games against the Patriots to end but we're still talking about Kansas City and San Francisco and LA Rams and Detroit Lions and the New York Jets all mixed in to that second half of the season. So maybe there's an in-season fade as there uh, on, on that team as well. For Steven, I am Matt. Good luck on all your Buffalo Bill bets.